so when I started doing this, the biggest problem I had was trying to figure out where the Envision system was located. Like I was having such a hard time understanding like where the files were at and everything on there. So what I tried to do is just make a, a fairly simple graphic. Um, just imagine the gray box. This is the EC boss. And it's a little different on S1000s, and we'll just say that for a different day. <laughs> it's very similar, except instead of having the Niagara 4 database, it's just GFX and uh, everything else is separate. But if you just imagine inside the, there, there's two separate hunks of file system, and there's one that's doing all of our traditional Niagara 4 database, your trending, alarming, all that stuff is in that blue box on the left. And obviously that the Envision doesn't take up more memory than everything else. It just, in order to get all the pieces out there so that we can try and explain this. When you put on the Envision distribution file, so we have our normal AX support pack, or they call it the, whatever it is, the Niagara 4 support pack, loads all your disk tech files and that kind of stuff. The Envision distribution file loads everything you need to use for Envision. So when you load that on there, it's putting a couple of different things on the EC Boss 8 that, again, I was struggling with this a lot. DG Lux, or we're going to call it just full-blown Envision Studio, that is um, not Express Envision that you guys are thinking of. So when you're using Express Envision and going in and editing graphics, you're in a project. You're not in full-blown DG Lux Studio, okay? So DG Lux Studio is what gets in, installed with that, with that uh, that distribution file. So inside of that, and that's where I was kind of showing two paths here, inside of DG Lux we load a project. And a project would be whatever is whatever the specific, and this is going to get a little bit complex, but we're going to take like Blythe House or my house or really maybe probably not your guys' house, but I created a project just for my house that has power monitoring, that thermostat interface you guys have seen. That's not Express Envision, that's just a project I created called Flaherty House. That is, that is my project. There is no Express Envision, there's no extra pieces to it, that's the whole project. What you guys are seeing when you're going out onto a job site is the project loaded is Express Envision. That, that's a project, okay? Express Envision then inside of it has a whole bunch of templates, so it's basically a project inside a project. So you have DG Lux Studio, Inside of that, there's a project loaded called Express Envision. And then inside of Insp Express Envision is where we're building all the graphics that go on our system. So when you look at 3E or whatever, all those graphics are inside of the Express Envision project. So Studio, Express Envision, and then your job project is inside of that. Okay, and We're going to go through those pieces in a minute, but it's pretty important to understand how those pieces go together. If I'm not using Express Envision and I'm just putting my own thing on it, there's not another project inside of a project. I'm just making, I'm just making one piece. So originally, DG Lux was built. There was no Express Envision, and it's hard software to use. Really powerful, but it takes a lot of training to get used to it. So what they were doing was getting rid of the, the complex part of it. They made a project to make it simple, drag and drop to build equipment graphics. That's what Express Envision was built for. Or you'll you'll see it called. Uh, uh, project Assist. Uh, PA, you'll see folders in there called PA, that's what that stands for, it's Project Assist, and that's the DG Lux branded name of the same thing. Any questions with that so far? Okay, so to slightly further complicate, so you have one of two paths, you're either building inside of DG Lux, or inside of uh, Express Envision, sorry, you're building inside of Express Envision, or you're loading a project that's not using Express Envision, it's going to be one of those two. Now to complicate it just a little bit more, so this is going to be like, uh, so this is what I had a hard time understanding. In an EC boss, you only have one database file in it. So say you load Woodman Office or Blythe House or whatever, that is the project running on that, on that system for Niagara 4. You're running whatever that one database is. Inside of DG Studio or DG Lux, we can run multiple projects. You can run 100 projects inside of it. So I could have an Express Envision project with my own project, with five other projects, with one we built just for the CEO project, with one that's built just for the energy manager. So you can have a whole bunch of projects all inside that one EC boss. That was the part that gave me the most troubles. I was thinking one, one project is what that thing works on, and that's not the case. You can load, load and take away as many as you want. Good. Everybody know you can do that, run multiple projects? Okay. So is each project a different length? Yes. Each project is a different hyperlink, it's a different web address, 
they are independent of each other. So they run completely independent. So for example, Fairfield, which we just finished up, that has two projects on it. Actually, it has three projects. It's got a map project, so when you pull it up, you're looking at the map of the, build, map of the campus. And when you click on one, you're going into the Fairfield High School project. If you click on the middle school, you're going into the Fairfield Middle School project. Those are all residing on the network, on the web supervisor. And if you click on Pence, you're jumping out and going to the project that's inside that EC boss. So that, that project has four separate projects on it, or that school district has four separate projects on it. So with one Jace, though? Uh, supervi no, there's three okay. Jaces and a supervisor. So. Okay. And then the last piece on that is uh, the only thing that's shared, so if you've got five projects on inside of Express and Vision, or if you've got five projects in DG Lux, they're all referencing the same database. So you can have it on a web supervisor. They're all referencing the same data. You're just giving them different links. So you can build, like I said, this is where you build a, a project for the energy manager of the school district that only wants to see power monitoring stuff. We can build them an interface that all they click around is just see power monitoring stuff. They never get into or see the HVAC side. They're just looking and they only have access to that one project. And then the last piece is you'll see the DG5 files. Those are basically the HTML. Those are the, those are building the files on the system. So everything you're seeing when you pull up a project is a is a is a grouping of DG5 files. So these other projects you set them up in the like user manager where we're if you go, log in, it's one project, and yep. then I log in, it's another. That's where you set it up in the uh, navigation file. So in the nav file, and they nav actually file. point it at whatever project you want. So there'll be a list of those projects in there. Yep, and the one we're doing today, when in order to... you projects, you're just saying basically set of graphics. Yeah, it's basically set of graphics. They just house them as a project. So uh, we'll be able to see it on this one easy, because we're all working on the same supervisor machine in the closet back there. and. Everybody, your number is your project you're working on. So we're going to have user one project, user two project, user three project, and you guys can all build simultaneously on the same server and create your own graphic system. So that's why I was kind of going to do it that way. All right. Super clear, right? Okay. So everybody can do this on their machine. The site we're going to is 192.168.0.181. All right, so everybody logged in. Yeah, I, just Eric and then Eric. One, two, three, four. Sure. Sure. Yep. Yeah. So to go to full blown Envision Studio, which is what's going to be on. Yep. So to go to full blown Envision Studio, just right after the IP address, you're going to type Envision. Enter. And that should launch the full blown studio version. This isn't going to be inside Express Envision. This is the full blown studio. So we're at, we're looking at this top level right here. You're probably all going to get a, uh, a user agreement saying that you adhere to do whatever it is you're going to do. Oh, yeah. So once you're here, I want you to go to Project and Open Project. Wait, that's not where I'm at. Where you at? I got some weird pop up. That's, that's what I got. Yeah, I got that okay. too. That's where you're supposed to be. So okay. that's that's where we're going next. So open project. Oh. Okay, so remember how I talked about how a, a version of DG Lux installed can have multiple projects in it? So you can see these are all the projects that are currently loaded in this in this system. Okay? So I've got 15 plus the Express and Vision template, plus the widgets and images and modules and rooftop, and then a blank project that's got nothing in it. This is how you would start any new project. This is with Kent and all them and Jenny. This is this is where you start with, is with Express and Vision. So we're, all I did was make you all the project and named it user 1234. I've made no changes inside of it yet. Okay? So just pick whatever one you're gonna be. Like I'm gonna be 15. Six. And I just hit open. And I will be inside. Oh. 15. And then you'll see up here in the upper left it's gonna show your your username so that you're inside of user for me user 15 project okay so since we're in the full-blown version we don't want to be in the full-blown version this is what me and Kenton went to class to learn how to use and this is a week-long class to even we get remotely sort of kind of crappy good at it so it, it takes a lot of work to get good at the, the studio version of this is pretty powerful but it takes a lot of work so what you want to do is go to index 
when you double click index, that's where it's going to pull up that, this is the familiar screen you've seen oh, before, right? Yeah. So again, we're looking at the project inside of DG Logs. We're going to go to preview, and then you're going to right click on preview and say open viewer link. You probably want to be in Chrome for this if you're not already, because uh, oh. most of the other ones don't play very well. We do and we do what? Is there a reason behind that? Where it plays and built for um, Chrome. Yeah, it, it is built. It is right. built to support right. Chrome. Yep. Um, it's weird because like uh, uh, Edge works at my house. I can use that on my laptop and it works fine. And then I come to my desktop and it doesn't work. How come it? If it's built for Chrome, why would it work better in Edge? It was just fast. It's fast. This portion of it. Oh, yeah. I'll show you. It's not a lot of weight on this area. So this is where you would start any project. So what we're going to do is each of you, like I said, under the BACnet network, each of you had a folder uh, that was user one, two, three, four. So we're just going to start with Style Manager. If you just hover over it, you're going to see it. I don't know if your guys' will or not, but see how mine pops up this godforsaken project, manage project. I hate, this is, this is called their help menu, so everything you hover on will give you a different little pop-up menu. I don't know. It comes up sometimes, and other times it doesn't. Yeah, mine, mine doesn't do it. Mine does not do it. If you log in on the little gear and go to the user list, <laughs> on your name, if you turn off help tips, that's what that, that's what that is. And while it may be awesome for a little bit, you will be quickly annoyed with it after it <laughs> covers up whatever you're looking at ten times. Is the left off? Yeah, little gear box down there. Okay. Where'd you change that? You know, I have that show up on other jobs where they pop up on the bottom of the gear. Oh, thank God. Where do you see that? The, the it's all this white little square uh, foods here. Okay, I'm just trying to be bonkers. Okay, so going back home, we're going to start with the style manager. The whole thing's built as just being a one, two, three, four process. Every, every part of it's kind of built that way. Um, one that I put on there is just I created a style for Woodman. Really, I, I intend that to be updated per customer, but it's <coughs> it's honestly up to you guys. If you want to if you want to update it to their colors, we we do it sometimes. It's just there's no rhyme or reason to it. It's I, I don't care. Some people care, some don't. It just gives you some customability. How you do it though is you clone something. So if we take this tech controls. Just hit clone. We can name this style. So, how about y'all name your own style? Uh, 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 and then you hit the little pen to paper button, and that gives you edit. And this is where you're going to edit like <coughs> background colors. Oh, like mine. Like, oh, that's horrible. <coughs> yeah, I'll make mine just like that, so it's not too terrible. Honestly, just go through and play with the colors you want. If you want to change the header color or um, give it a title of so that'll give you all that kind of information. So uh, a piece to remember on this is. I would recommend pulling up an air handler or something like that that you have built. And then go to the style manager, because if you do that, then you'll see all the elements of your air handler. And as you change the style, you'll see it, see it update. And like if you're like me, I edit a background and it suddenly blends in with my text and I can't see it. And just having something up in the background while you're editing will sure make the style manager easier to use. If you're not, if you're like me and you're not real artistic, don't screw with the colors. <laughs> We've had some pretty bad baby puke yellow with white text on it. Like, oh my god, that's terrible. Like, even I can tell that's awful. So, all right, <coughs> let's go to navigation. We're going to start with the hardest one first. So we're going to build a graphic from scratch and go through the whole process of building an equipment. 
graphic first. Then we're going to do one out of a template. And then we're going to do a floor lay layout. So we're going to do an equipment graphic first. And basically what I built each one of you is a single zone air handler. Um, all it has is two stages of heat, two stages of cool, Oc heat set point, occupied cooling set point, supplier temp, that kind of stuff. And there's some random number generators on it, so you'll actually see values updating and you can put gauges on it and gauges will move and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, but I would prefer that you use your own folder when you do it. So we're going to start by just creating a new template. I'm going to just drag the new template over onto my project tree. And so this is replacing how you would normally set up like your navigation file or something inside Niagara 4. We're creating our own navigation file as we go. Uh, so I drop that. So I'm just going to take a new template, and it's a new template because we haven't built anything for it yet. So we're just going to drag it over here, drop. I'm going to call mine. I'm going to go under configuration. Since I'm user 15, I'm going to go to user 15. And you'll see under your user, you should have a controller 1 and a controller 2. Controller 1 is the one we're going to use right now. This is the one I built with the random generators. Controller 2 is actually a full-blown air handler program, but it's not live, so it kind of sucks to look at. Uh, but we'll do that with the template, because we have a template that matches it. So all I'm going to do is select controller 1, like that. You're going to see it's going to come down and say it's got 19 points in it. If you want to select multiple <coughs> controllers, like let's say you were doing a whole bunch of EABs, you just hold control and you're going to see across those two there's 19 points in common. Only, th or there, I'm sorry, there's only three points in common. So it's showing 19 points. I'm using this as, see how it says key? It's saying it's using this, this device is my template. Oh. This is what I'm looking at these points. So if I select another one to go with it, you're going to see it only shows there's only three points that match between those two programs. If I want to change it, I can make this my key, and now I have 116 points in this program. Only three of the points match with the other one, but this would be the key. <coughs> if you make edits, it's looking at the points inside controller two. So we just want to control one thing, so we're going to do only controller one. It was named air handler one. Say. We don't care. It makes it way faster. Yeah. All right. So everybody got their controller in there? No. Well, I've heard it I can't get to my ad button. Where do you get to that? You got to scroll it. You got to grab it and pull up the. Oh, the way. Oh, I got gotcha. you. You might want to yep. make sure you're not zoomed in or something. Right? Yep. So one other thing to keep in mind, like there's not really a zoom feature inside here. Your zoom feature is control and your mouse wheel. That's your zoom feature. Okay. So if there's something you can't see, like it's off the bottom of the screen, zoom quickly, click it, and then go back. Uh, once you use it for a while, you'll get used to that really, really fast. You'll get used to that like that scrolling operation and that zooming operation pretty darn fast. Or else you right click on stuff over and over and wonder why. Yeah, that's <laughs> plenty of time. All right. So now that it's in there, we're going to do one more thing uh, in order to make this a little bit prettier. Right click, and if you go into edit mode, you can see you can add an icon to it. And so you'll see you can add like a heating, cooling, or a flame symbol or something like that. So I'll let you guys do it, but on Ignite, oh, here's my camera. I don't remember exactly where I put it. On Ignite, under uh, training, <coughs> oh, you put it on. I made a training folder. So if you go under our, our training folder on Ignite, and so then under training there should be one in there called in-house training which is right here now and then there's one called envision 101 I think yeah so icons. under that there's a folder called icons and all you do is when you find that icon you want just drag it to this drop image here and that'll make it nice So you see like when we add trends or set points, we try and add something to make it a little fancier and show what it is. How do you drag it on? Click and drag. Make your, whoa. You gotta minimize the screen? Yeah, make your Windows Explorer yeah. like half size. Yeah. Yeah. So if I pull it up, you gotta uh, see if I don't find one. Okay. 
Here on Windows 10, the uh, Windows button and like the left arrow or the right arrow will auto snap whatever you're in to whatever half your screen. And Same. then ask you for the other one. Say it again. Uh, uh, Windows button. Yeah, you can. Buy yeah. it. And then the arrow key left or right, it'll auto split in, uh, the window. And then it'll probably ask you what else you want to split it in. How do you undo that? Uh, Windows and up. Okay. Or just drag the title bar all the way up to the top. That is pretty amazing. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> you know, I saw that on a Windows commercial window like three years ago, yeah. but I never. And then you got to click, and then you click on your other one if you want. Oh, just see if I can drag it. Click on your other one. Well, no, my Windows up didn't get that. Oh, actually, it did. That was control one. Oh, yeah. All right. So if you didn't see that, I'm just dragging a picture file, and I just drag it to drop image here. And then yeah. now I have that. Or you guys can get sure Windows 10 are so cool. I don't know about yeah, Actually, Windows, Windows 7 can do it, too. Not, it, doesn't, it doesn't prompt you for the other window, though. You just click on it right here. I always just drag a box over the side of this thing. Get too many things to check. So again, on this piece of this, the only thing we're doing is just we're just creating the navigation tree, and on that navigation tree, we're telling it what graphic yeah, template you want to look at. We haven't actually no, built the template like yet. We're just saying this is the one we're going to use. Okay? Go back. So now that we built that, we're going to go to our next step. So we're going to page and data creator because we already made, we made the template. You can imagine you sit here and build a whole building, and then we go over here to page and data creator. Are you going to go back to the modules at some point? You need a mouse. Uh, we can. I, that's the part I never Here's what I do. But that's okay. okay. I don't want to keep on track. Well, You're in the wrong view anyway. So on page and data creator, you're going to see there's a grayed out symbol next to our controller. No. And that grayed out symbol no. means there's no graphic no. associated no. with it. No. So we haven't, we haven't created a graphic for this yet. That's that no. template we were just looking at. Whatever you named yours, I, I don't know. So if you click this, well, if I click the controller, it's going to do nothing because there's no graphic to look at. If I click that button, it's going to take you into that editing dashboard. And so this editing dashboard is going to pull up your widget libraries down at the bottom. And again, it's just a sim it's going to be a simple step-by-step -step process. So we're going to start. It always defaults to the equipment layer, but let's go back to layout. the difference between these three layers. Layout. This is where you're going to put piping, ductwork, things that don't move and are not going to be animated. This is the static part of this graphic. Equipment is going to be where you put the heating coil, the cooling coil, the fan, anything that moves. The dampers, those are all going to be on the equipment layer. And then the widgets layer is going to be all your text, updating values, thermostat, that kind of stuff. Okay? Trends, graphs. So, <clears throat> I'm going to do it quickly, and then you're going to do it quickly. Let's build an air hammer. This is a small single zone. There's no economizer. All you have is just stages of heat and stages of cool. So, I'm just going to take my pieces and drag them on here, and you're going to see the whole thing will resize itself. How did you get to where you're at? You have to go to the next step. Hold on. At the top, you have to go to the next step. Step three. Okay, so something to think about when you're in web editing, and this is different than what we had in IR4. If I just click and drag, this is the super annoying part. If I click and drag, it doesn't do anything. Since it's a web editing tool, you have to select what you're on and then drag it. If you don't select it and you just do that click and drag, it's going to drive you crazy because you can't figure out why stuff won't move. You have to select it and then move it, and it'll move. And then you can use your arrow keys to bump it into place. Uh, huh. Is there a rotate button or do we have to find the right? <coughs> Is there what? A rotate button or do we have to find the right image? There's not a rotate button in this. In full blown DG Lux, you can rotate things all over the place. In Express and Vision, 
you got to find the piece of ductwork. If you want ductwork to go up and down, you need to go start looking for ductwork that goes up and down. So if you don't have a mouse, this really sucks. Get a mouse. Get a mouse. <laughs> So for my air handler, there's nothing else I really want to add to this. Okay, so since I got that much done, again, since you're in a web browser, if your web browser crashes, this is all gone. So save button. Every time you make a significant amount of changes or you've been working for a minute or two or five minutes, hit save. Like just save yourself the hassle and get in the habit of hitting save. Well, you made a bunch of changes. Yeah, screw it up. Don't, don't hit save. Don't hit save. <laughs> you hit this <laughs> button really below it, and that will take you back to your last save. What happens when you get something like that? I got a big gap out of the bottom of my ductwork. Yep. Okay. So all that is is you didn't stretch the ductwork out, so I can make the same gap by doing this. Uh -huh. You just got to make it bigger so you can see all of it. Like it's small or whatever. Uh, I see. Oh, do you ever do that? I just stretch it. You can stretch it? Yep. Okay. I think it's smaller. Well, that's separate than what I was doing. But it just covers up. No. Doesn't actually shrink the whole thing, does it? Oh, Control Z doesn't work. No, there is no Control Z. Oh, that's unacceptable. Save often, so you can use your new button. All right. Everybody got a little bit of ductwork on the page. I don't really care if it's perfect, just that you know how to get the ductwork on the page. Okay. Equipment. So the next step is going to be put the pieces of equipment on the page. Where'd you save it? Oh, sorry. Save the item. Did to interrupt. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to go to my equipment and I'm going to grab a fan for mine. I need more fans. Can you do? I stretched that out so far. I don't know. And then I'm going to grab a. I'll use a look. Say that like that's a bad thing. So <laughs> the ductwork goes at an angle, but when you're trying to move devices around, they go straight across. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's difficult to line up, though. So how did you stress oh. that she's liberal? I don't know. Just click on the edge of it. Drag. Are like you going to drag anything? You can put a, a separate uh, piece in yeah, there. Yeah, you need a piece. You put a string string piece in, George. It's in the template. I'm going to build a med line here. I'll put my duck heater, electric duck heater, in the return. <laughs> okay, so I'm stepping to the next Ideas. the next step here, and then yeah. when we get when we get through this, then we'll go back around and see how everybody's catching up. So <coughs> now the equipment page, since we're animating this part of it, this linking right here, this is the binding dialog. So this is how we're going to bind what we want to have happen on the graphic. So if you click that, it's going to pop up the points on the right hand side. So these points, so in the beginning when we <coughs> drug our new template in and we told it to look at controller 1, that was the key. So the points I'm seeing here, whatever you had set up for your key. So if I could pick controller 2 as my key, I'd be seeing all the points for controller 2, not controller 1. So I'm only building the graphic based on what that key is on. 
So. Are you with me? Yeah. Sort of? Kind of. Slightly. Okay. But we're still in the equipment, right? Yep. So yeah, what I'm going to do is drag, because I want to animate my fan to match my fan status. So mm -hmm. I just drag and drop the fire. And you'll see immediately it'll start animating to whatever that current status is. Same for heat. I'm only going to use stage one. And cooling. Stage one. Wait a minute. So the animation quit because those aren't on. But I have them all set up on random generators in the background, so you should see things kick on and off and stage and status and no status. Okay, is everybody able to animate their couple pieces? There you go. They all came on at the same time. Do you have these on like multi vibrators or something? They're on multi vibrators and time delays and stuff. They're all slightly different. Okay. Now, we're going to go just a little bit deeper on each one of these parts. So let's take the cooling coil and I'm going to hit the gear next to it. So each one of those elements, the gears on the left hand side. So what the gear is doing is shows us the information about that that element. So this element is that cooling coil. So I can do something really simple like I'm going to take my and something else to figure out BG Lux. You can link everything. Everything can be linked to something else. So if I take cooling percentage and I'm going to link that to interval. So there's my dynamically changing uh, interval. And you're going to see it flash faster as that number goes up and flash slower as it goes down. Oh, that's oh. fancy. Or maybe it's faster. I know Looks like it's faster as it gets lower and slower as it's faster. We do that on the VFDs and stuff automatically already? No. Darn. So it goes really fast at a low number and looks like it slows down as it goes up. Because the fans are these coils only uh, uh, on off. Can you use the percentage? Can you use the percentage on these? Uh, you could use the percentage. It would, uh, it would almost be another class. I can I can show how to do that, but there's quite a bit of it's you do like a gradient. It's inside problem. here. You have to do some dynamic linking. So you would create, if it's coming in as a value of, well, let's go over here. If we're bringing in a value of right here, and I want to do a translation and create like a, a value map, I can say when it comes in as a 15, I want it to be on. And if it's 16, I want it to be off. Or if it's between these two numbers, I want it to do this. So you can set all that. A lot of the stuff that took a while to set up in AX can all be done right on the point here. You just got to think a little bit about it. That is freaking it, sweet. It, it takes a little while to set that stuff up and figure it out. It actually changes the speed that the fan moves. Bring it over. Such as backwards. It gets faster when your number gets lower. Uh, and you should be able to actually reverse that. Uh, value map, expression, yeah, number scale. So you can do a number scale input zero equals 100 input 100 equals zero. And that will reverse the value. How did you get here? What did you do so that the cool does it? Because I don't see the fan speed. Oh, man. Alright. I don't see how you got there. Got where? The little blue dot next to your interval. Yep, the little blue dot. Yeah, but your little blue dot has more options than mine does. Maybe, hold on, I wasn't clicked on that. Nope. I don't have that conversion. Do you have deal. a point wrong in yet? Did you find it? Oh, yeah. wait. The conversion set to none. Never mind. Hold on. You can also right click and do the same thing. Edit, and it pulls up that same menu that I did from over here. So, Ryan? Yep. You have a visible, an able, and an interval. Yep. And you can link all those separately, right? Yes. So what's the difference between enabled and visible or disappeared? What's enabled then? Just on or off the animation? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's say you got a heat pump and you want to yeah. use the hot water for us and cool. You can switch it that way. Yeah. With a reversing valve. Yeah, that's exactly what we do with the heat pump. Is that. Okay. So you could you could throw a number of stages in on the electric heat. 
faster if there's three stages or two. Or they can create one standard air handler and have set up points where if it's not set up, you know. And again, you can, heating coil, that could be invisible. Mm -hmm. you can set the, all those up to this number scale down below. So if you're setting number of stages, one to three, you can make one equals 100. That, be, that won't zero. be dynamic or anything like that. Yeah, like, yeah, so if, if I set, I don't have cool. Well, I'm, I'm saying like you stages. Pull in a bear handler and it's got, you know, you got your max stages, set point of four or whatever. Would pull that in dynamically and. Oh no, it's not going to do the number scale okay. dynamically. If you set one up that way and then duplicate the graphic, it will. Uh, you just you'd have to set it up somewhere first. But, yeah. All right. Did everybody make that happen? Save. Making it happen. <laughs> Get her done, Dave. Okay, let's go to the next page, which is going to be widgets. All right, so widgets is where we get to put all the other cool stuff on the branch. So we're going to start with callouts. Callouts is by far seems to be the most confusing part of all of it. So <coughs> we can zoom out here a little bit so we can see a few more callouts all out. So I'm going to take. So the version you're on has a couple of newer pieces to it. So I'm going to pull a node value call out. I'm going to make this my supplier temperature point. And again, I'm on the widgets tab. Something that can what? screw you up is if you're on the wrong yeah. one and you hit copy, paste, you can paste a widget on the wrong layer. And then it won't work with the damn. <laughs> it does all kinds of weird stuff. So make sure when you're pasting a widget, you're on a widgets tree. And if you're doing equipment, right. you're on the equipment side. Mm -hmm. When you put it on the wrong layer, it doesn't work. So same thing, I just want to bind something to it. So I'm going to say bind data, and I want to put uh, my supplier to supplier to right there. So that's one point. Let's say we want to add multiple points. Going was going to those 52 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. <laughs> that might eat first. So I'm going to drag in. I'm just going to make a set points list for myself. So I'm going to add heat cooling, heating. I think I have a supplier set point. And I have a CO humidity set point. CO2 sample. I don't think I did. Oh, there it is. CO2 sample. So I'm going to add all those on there. And you see when I add it and it grew off the page, it's kind of a pain, but if you click on it, it'll resize for you. All right, I'm going to say what happened here. Why are you Replacing instead of adding. Yeah, right. the wrong node. Oh. I got no call on that. Yep, you need the node list. <sighs> Son of a... That's nice. I have a question on the node sure. thing you did call out. Yep. On that 69.4, that one. Acts differently, you know. You, there's no blue dot on that one. If you go to properties, okay. Is there any way other than just dragging a point you can see what that's hooked to that you know of? I mean, the other ones you can always go to the properties and find out what point it's going to. Uh, not that I have found. Okay. <laughs> uh, I would agree with that 100. percent I think. I don't know if you can add an action in front. I don't think you can do anything. Oh, there it is. Under actions, it's showing what it's connected to. Yeah. I didn't realize. I thought that was something <clears throat> custom. I can't add those for my Prairie City filter drop. And I would copy it from another graphic to that graphic, but I always had the same deal. I never realized I could just drag it a point to it. I thought it was some custom thing to the damn blue dot. Okay, so but, that actually brings up a good point I want to show here real quick. So looking on our tree here, I'm pulling points in off again. Remember the key. This is the point. This is the, the graphic we're looking at. 
these will all update whatever controller you're looking at. These values will all update to the current controller it's on. If you link the point off the data tree, it won't update. It becomes it's a static point. So if you want to link like outside air temp or oh. CPU usage or something, you can pull it out of the data tree. But no matter what graphic you're looking at, it's not going to dynamically update. It's linked to that point. It's never going to change. So if I'm going to show like air handler supply temp on all my VAVs, I would pull it out of the data tree because that's that's never going to update. If you want it relativized. Yeah, if you want it relativized, pull it out of the points. If you don't want it relativized, pull it out of the data tree. Why wouldn't you want it relativized? It may be referencing the same point on every record. Well, yeah, it could outdoor be in... Outdoor air temperature. Like you said, yeah, outdoor I mean, air temperature. You said it's never going to update. Maybe I missed something. It's not gonna. It's not gonna relativize to the. It will update to whatever that current point is. It's if I click on VAV one two three four, whichever one I'm on, it's always gonna show the same value. Oh, okay. It's not gonna relativize to each unit. So. So air handler will discharge air temperature or something. You know, you want all all the VAVs to have the same feed coming into it. If I want to pull in outside air temp, for example, I can pull that in from here. No matter what I do with this, that it's not live, but that that point will will, will never uh, organize. It'll, it'll never relativize to a new node. It's always going to show the outside air temp from that point. But the neat thing about this is now you can pull information you never really could before. So we can pull out uh, platform services. I can pull out like. Niagara version, so I can pull out information about the station. I can pull out what time zone it's in. I can pull out current CPU usage. There's any kind of apparently it's not getting used hardly at all. So. Wow. You can pull any info you want right onto the graph. In that way. All right. So we got through the point callouts. So charts and the other widgets are basically the same. I'm going to grab a. chart, I'm going to put my cooling percent and my heating percent on the same graph, and it will make my heat red and my cooling blue. I'm going to grab a, a graph. So these graphs will build with any points that have trend extensions on them. If there's no trend extension on it, it doesn't do anything. You should have trend extensions on all your points here. Uh, so if you take like, so just for reference, the first item you drop is going to be a blue line, the second item is going to be a red line, the third line, or the third item is going to be green. No matter what. Uh, yeah, you can go in and change them later, but like if I'm making a, a zone temperature graph, I'm going to add cooling, then I'm going to add heating, and then I'm going to add space temp. Yeah, that only makes sense. I thought I did. I must have. Yeah. <clears throat> I've struggled with trends a lot in the vision. Uh, they might not be enabled. Sorry. I just got it licensed this morning, but I forgot to enable all those. In any case, if I go to edit properties on this graph, there's quite a bit of information in here about it. So I can name it space to it. And it'll update it here. Honestly, there's really no reason to mess with almost any of this stuff. This is whether or not it's going to start at zero. Um, if you want to have a specific function for your date, like I usually like to do 48, the most current 48 hours. And 
that'll give me two days worth of trend data on here. So you can see your uh, optimum starts and your shutdowns at night and what the space time did over a couple of days. And if you pick relative, it's always that sliding window instead of looking at yesterday's values. Because if you say on there current day, you're going to just see the couple hours till whatever time it is today. And then down at the bottom, these are the series as we dropped into it. Even though there's no trend on there, and they're not enabled, it still adds that series in there. So as soon as you do put a trend on it, it'll start showing up. And these, you can actually click and edit right from here. <coughs> and if you want to change the color to some other Fancy graphic over here. So those trends are the ones that are actually in Niagara 4, right? Not, yep. not the ones coming out of the ECYs. No, these are Niagara 4 trends. Yep. Okay. So there's no trend in it and it's not enabled. It's not going to build a graph. Nope. And chart builder either. Nope. It has to be. All this data comes from Niagara 4. The DGLUX doesn't create any data on its own. It's just looking at the stuff out of the Niagara form. I don't so, want to pick on anybody, but at Fairfield, many of the points that Greg and I were looking at didn't have trends on them. We were adding stuff in there. Okay. Just a little. I just I thought we were doing it somewhere. I was confused. Okay. I thought they somehow it was building out of. If they're not there, it's a mistake. They, okay. They should be in the. They're, they're, they're Niagara Four trends is what shows up on here. There is no other. <coughs> Oh, and that's see, what it is. And that's where I thought, I was like, I'm doing something wrong. Well, some of the trends on the ECY, though, you're not seeing them underneath, the, like, space temp. You're seeing them, you can import the eclipse ones under trend logs. So the trend's in Niagara 4, but it's not, like, under the tree. I don't know if that and I didn't look there. makes a difference. It does. Remember. They won't show up in here. Oh, they won't? Those, if, if I pull in an ECY trend, there's not a trend extension. Um, DGLUX doesn't accomplish that correctly yet. But even if it's in, even if you bring it under trend logs in, if you back that device, under so if you do it in report builder, you can pull the information out of there. Mm -hmm. But I can't relativize it here. Oh, Kenton's, okay. can't relativize it. Kenton is working on a deal to where it will dynamically go recreate those string paths to know where to look mm -hmm. to put it on these. Uh, we just don't have it done yet. Sure. So okay. My guess is once he finishes that, they're going to come out with a fix that will do it anyway. So <laughs> it's it was one of the it was one of the higher uh, higher items on the list when I was in that class out at AHR. Mm -hmm. So everybody's having the same issue and wants the same thing. So so the inter um, no, if you do a standalone controller like at my house. That's different. That's picking up a different trend because you're not. It's pulling the trends right out of the control. Because okay. yep. there it seems like it makes a difference what I put the intervals to. It does. Uh, and even Jason, we, you looked at making a COV slash interval trend, and Niagara just can't forget it. You can do it. You did it? I thought you said I you couldn't get it to no. actually show up on the list. No, I was uh, disabling and enabling the uh, the alarm extension, but it uh, it screws up the plotting on on the uh, charts because it leaves a, a gap. It doesn't it doesn't count. It doesn't chart the ones that say start next to it. If you look in your your trend logs, okay. and you'll see it say start start and start, and it won't plot them on that chart. <laughs> Okay. okay, the top button here, the eyeball in there, that's so you can view. I basically go out of edit mode and you can see what you've done. All right, we're going to add one more piece to this graphic. So we're going to go back into edit mode of the widgets. I'm going to go to my node list. Properties, 
you saw it just a second ago down at the bottom of this list, there's something called actions. <clears throat> so is, is there a way to get the series back if it breaks? Um, yeah, don't yeah, either you accidentally say uh, no. You're not going to back up. You just you let, well, go to a. I mean, you can go pull the template out of an old backup or something like that. But no, once you, if you break something and save it, it's broke. I mean, the X editor was the same stinking way. It's just once you saved it and broke it, it was broke. You had to go find a backup. So. Yeah, I've had it where the series just like disappeared. Uh, that that was a versioning. There there was a version issue. That, I think we were creating that using an, an Express Envision template with the wrong DigiLux template. I'm not sure though. It doesn't do it in the new 4.3 one that I've been using. I have not had the issue with it since. So that was frustrating. Yep. All right. So the hamburger icon. You guys know what the hamburger icon is? No. Okay. It doesn't look like hamburgers. If I hit Add Action. That's called a hamburger icon. Three dots and three lines. It's this, this item right here. So what that's supposed to indicate to the customer or you or anybody is that there's an action we can take on this box. That, that's what that's indicating. So I'm going to make an action. I want when I click on it, I want it to jump to controller one, which is not very exciting because we only have one thing in our list. But I want it to jump to controller one, and I'm just using the auto. I could I could also make that jump to like a schedule and have it pop up a different graphic, or I could have it jump to a another graphic on the, here. I'll show you. When we bring in the other template, you'll see. Don't okay. get hyperlink. What's that? A hyperlink. I, I think I tried to do hyperlink. It yeah, that goes like to a website. It just, just, like, yeah, just stick with the auto. Hyper, yeah. Hyperlink wants to go to a website. DG5 wants to go to a, an internal DG5 file. Um, How'd you get to the uh, color one to come yeah, up? Yeah, where do you I can get color one to come up? So everything's coming up here. I'm just dragging out of my group. So uh, I'm, oh, I'm saying right. I want it to go somewhere. Yeah, if I want to, if I want to take like heat percent, and I want to do data action, and I want to override, and then I can edit that I want it to override permanently to 100. Okay. I can really screw some stuff up. Yep. So I believe I had my heating percent right up here. So my data action is when I click on this link. See my little hand comes up, overrides heating to 100%. Data oh, action is complete. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I didn't know you have another action and double click releases, right? Uh, yeah. Well, there's a good point. Yeah, you can do that. It, so, what, did it tell you? No, it's not giving you a hint what you just did, though. Yeah, it showed it down in the corner when I did it. Oh. Oops. How do you get one in the open? So I'll go back down to the bottom. Actions. I'm going to add another action. When I double click, I'm going to take heat percent and make it go to data action. And I want it to go to auto. All right, so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add a floor plan to all this. As you can guess, we're going to use location. Just like before, we're just going to drag it on there. I'm going to call mine. So in this case, you're going to see there's no templates or anything associated with it because there's not a there's not a piece of equipment. Associating this to it's just it's a it's a it's a higher level than a piece of equipment. So we're going to go to navigate. All right, so that was navigation builder, the page and data creator. All right, we're going to go a little out of order here so that we understand everything. Again, there's no graphic made yet, so when I click that, we're going to create a floor plan. 
okay, again, there's three steps, okay? Images is the floor plan, or whatever graphic you're trying to drop on this page. Like as before, we were drawing the air handler. This time, we're going to draw the floor plan. Zones is going to be you know, that highlighted area you click on, and widgets is going to be outside area. So, in that same library file, under Training in Vision 101, there's a folder called, or just a file called Floor Plan. Drop it in there for you. <laughs> Property inspector on this gives you what they call padding. So the whole floor plan, the whole screen size shrunk to the size of the floor plan. So if I want to add some space around the floor plan, I would just do it here. Okay. So I made a little bit of space. And they made it real easy on this one, you just hit. Next. So this is the part that's going to be a little confusing. Bear with me here. So there's layers and layer groups. Okay. So if you click on this icon right up here, it's called the Layer Manager. Yeah. This is the part where you can mess up pretty good, but it's not. It's not that hard to fix. So. So in the layer manager, you can see we have an HVAC group, and we have a lighting group. And then we have a space temperature and occupancy layer under the HVAC group. And we have a lighting level under the lighting group. How do you get the layer manager? Okay, so what this does, if I draw a box on the screen and I want to associate that with a temperature or a color, it's and then I want to, for example, you go to a lighting layer, it's not going to be the same box. It's a different box. That's the layer group. Okay? So if you're going to draw a different group of boxes than you did before, that's the group. The layer inside the group is what value is associated with it. So cooling capacity, heating capacity, space temperature, humidity, CO2, whatever you want to associate with this layer, that's the data value. This group layer is the box. Easy enough, right? So I'm going to pick the first layer, space temperature. I was trying to create a whole other group. So you had to draw more boxes, and then probably oh, yeah. made a mess. <laughs> I redid this office with like six plans like nine times to figure out how the hell that worked. So, All right, so space temperature. Max min. This is just, I'm gonna, I want to put out that from 60 degrees to 80 degrees, and I'll just tell you now the sine wave that's changing your space temp is 60 to 80, so that's probably a pretty good range to make it. If you want to adjust your colors, you can click that and make it whatever you want. Okay, so since we're on space temperature, now you're going to see down here what's in our list is the template that we brought in. So I created an AHU1 template, and I created a single zone electric heat DX template. Those are the two templates we created when we were making our equipment graphics, right? So when you look at any job, you're going to see a listing of all the templates that you've built for that job. Because this wants to know what it's supposed to display for that piece of equipment when you pull up this floor plan. Even if it's not going to display anything for it? If it's not going to display anything for it, you don't need to put anything in it. You can leave it blank. But it comes up in Yep, it'll, every one of them will come up in the list regardless. <laughs> so if you got a bunch of templates. This is here. a long list. <laughs> this, is, this is where you pick the floor plan point if you want to do the yes. floor plan. Yes, so what we're going to do is we're going to do the first one, and it's going to pop out that list of all the points, and we're telling it I'm on my space temperature layer, and I want it to show space temp. My trend isn't something I'm going to show on the floor plan layer. I can give a crap less when it shows. It's not going to be shown anymore. And then my air handler one, that was my individual one I made. I'm going to call that space temp as well. And you can see the colors changing as my sine wave is moving. OK. 
Okay, so we built our space temperature one. Can you pick more than one? Is that the hover over? Uh, or no, that's for the yet. gradient. That's this, for the this gradient. is just the gradient for temperature. We're going to add okay. another one though. So, I don't have occupancy on mine. I don't want to use it. So we're going to make it just a little harder and we're going to add another layer. So I'm just going to add layer. And I'm going to call this one. We'll make this CO2. Can't select. So if you didn't set up your template and tell it what its key component is, when you click this button here, you're not going to get any values. It's just going to sit there and spin because it doesn't know what to look for. It doesn't know what it's supposed to go find those values at. All right, so we we made our CO2 layer. I'm going to add space CO2. And then for this one, I'm going to add space CO2. You can add whatever you want. I don't My value is going to be 0 to 100, but I want my 100 to be... You have to have one here. Dark blue. No, I should like gray. That, right? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Wouldn't, that wouldn't, wouldn't you have to actually change your max as well? Uh, for what? Oh, yes. Yeah. No, you're right. That needs to be 2,000. I don't have any lighting, so I'm just going to delete that whole layer. That whole thing. That's it. Give me a warning. In the real quick, it probably makes a big difference. So. Okay, so okay, so those are the layers. So I created two layers. I have a temperature layer and a CO2 layer. Okay, so you can see now I have a default layer and an HVAC layer. So default layer, anything you put on the default layer is going to show up on every layer, whether you hit lighting or temperature or CO2, everything on the default layer is always going to show up on the default layer. Okay? So I'm going to hit the little plus here so I can see both layers at the same time. And this one's going to be my HVAC layer. So now I have a default layer that I can look at and an HVAC layer that I can look at. Okay, so this is critically important. Now that we have this done, we're going to see <laughs> draw your draw your picture or draw your box on the HVAC layer. Um, the black one, the HVAC. Yeah. No, the the one you've selected, the gray is the HVAC. <laughs> what if you drew it on the default? It still shows up on the HVAC. Because it doesn't matter what layer you go to, if you go to lighting layer, it's still going to show up. Oh, I select it. Draw your HVAC stuff on the HVAC layer. Because you could have, say, an equipment status layer. That's weird. So when I drew on the HVAC layer, it doesn't show up on the default layer. So, like, can I draw one and then just it's duplicate? Not on the default layer. What's that? Sorry. Or no, everything that's under that HVAC layer in the where the blue layers are, that's what's going to come up. So space down four plan. Yep. Okay. Okay. So I drew my two things on the HVAC yeah. layer. I didn't draw anything on my default layer. See how when I go to default, nothing? HVAC, I have those. And if you had a lighting layer, you'd see your different group of boxes for your lighting. All right, so let's go to the next one. Or actually, let's link our zones here first. Oh, sorry. Go back, yeah. you go back to your zones and go to the HVAC layer. <coughs> and just like we did for the equipment graphics, let's hit the link button. And you're going to see the only thing on here is going to be your two controllers. You don't have any points or any of that stuff anymore because it's just looking at locations where we gave it its key points so it knows what to look at. So I'm going to say, I'm just going to drag it out. So this is controller one. And this is controller two. statuses and you want to show that on your on your HVAC layer but not on your lighting layer then you would have to draw those widgets on the HVAC layer. 
in our case, I, I don't have a different layer, I just have my HVAC one, so I'm just going to put everything on default. <coughs> the most important one on this is the, uh, I can find it, where's the layer selector? Layer selection tool. Uh, I'll show you. Widgets. Oh, there. And there's a layer selection tool. So I'm going to put that there, and then I'm actually going to put outside air, my outside air status on the default layer. All right, so we're done with that. Submit. All right, you should see your floor tan temperature changing, and if you hover on it, it's going to show controller one, space temp, and whatever your space temp is. And if I change to my other layer, HVAC CO2, these colors will update to match that, and it'll show controller one, space CO2, the parts Make it invisible if, say, you don't have the CO2. I've not gotten that to work very well, but you can go into uh, here, I think. You should be able to do something like just if I remember, make it transparent. Yeah, there was a way or, to make it. Uh, make it transparent at zero and then, you know, 400 being. Green and the blue button. I'm sure it can be done. Just, you know, I wonder if we could do just, it this way. Just click your. What if we took this and moved this your, over? Add another. Yeah, and then hit your make that or nothing. Ah, don't do that. Broken. Cancel. It's safe. Quick. Cancel. <laughs> <laughs> it's safe. Probably wouldn't if the controller was online. I'd have to play around. So it. yeah, I guess uh, you know I've got plenty of equipment that's got the space temp, but not a CO2 sensor. But the square is still there I because it's on every layer. You could create another layer that just had right. So you'd have to create multiple, you know, nine, squares nine, for nine, each. Can you duplicate layers? Yeah, how do you get that? Uh, I don't know about the duplication. So if I make that, like that. Here. Hey, there it is. Just drag it over. I made my default look transparent. It's still there, but. How do you delete if you did it? I clicked the default. And I made the default opacity no, zero, yeah, that's so it just two. doesn't show up. I like it. it. I can't highlight it. One box. Are you on HVAC or drive? Let's go back to do that in Marshalltown. I never thought to make the opacity zero. I kept trying to change it to no color, and it was deleting it. Right, right, look at that. I'm doing it. Can take it too. You're not a layer man. Uh, you'd still be able to click on it. That would be the only thing you'd click oh, on. Well, that's fine. Because then you just link to it. Link to right parts of both. Yeah, it's going to go to that piece of the anyway, so that doesn't really matter. Yeah, okay. okay. That's not a big deal. Uh -huh. I just. Yeah. There 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 is is color assume color that there's a, there. yeah. a humidity sensor there when there's really no humidity sensor there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So then now when I go to temperature, they both show up, and if I go to CO2, <coughs> only the zone that has a CO2 sensor shows up. Oh, right here. Can we set that into standards? What's that? Nice default. Oh, make the default, yeah. Okay. So is there a way to put, like one of the things in Prairie City, you know, they want to, is the equipment location shown on the floor plans, you know, 
which is fine for single zone, but like to show where the ERVs are and stuff. Is there a like, way we can? I don't know. Okay, so let's let's go back to floor plan and edit. The whole thing. Like, you get an idea what ceiling tile the power. <laughs> yeah, or just like, like where's like ERV3 at on the yeah. floor plan? You know, too. We have the links over here. But but, all right, so let's just say we want to show a couple of pieces of an equipment layer. So I'm going to go back to the widgets layer. And under WCC widgets, or if it's an older job that's got KWM, uh, mm -hmm. Kent, he had his initials on it. And we started using it so much, we standardized it. But, you can grab these down here, which are equipment status and equipment status one. I guess I don't know what the difference is. So we'll bring them in. It's like you know, them where you've got the, the floor plan and then you can paste small equipment over the top of it if you want. Well, you don't never do. Yeah, where it doesn't have the floor plan, it's just the uh, CC. Translucent, basically, that floor plan's not there anymore. It's just the uh, work. So you can click it on and off if you want it. Different layers added. So I'm going to make this one for uh, like the so like unit that, that we're using. Down. So we're going to make it for it's all based off of a, off the CAD drawings, anyways. That's yeah. they're, they're using a CAD drawing for that, and they just let it eliminate what they or go off. This is probably just all walls, but they can go to the HVAC so be, and have the duct layer. Like duct yeah. layer. Cool. Hey, hold on, Ryan. How'd you get to that like that? By clicking on that. So that you know okay. that this cell is actually this room. Yeah, here. Nice. Have these open in there. Yeah. If you're lucky, it's in the office. Yeah, I got that on there. Cool. Drug that in. Go to edit mode. That's really high tech there. All right, so I'm going to be okay. super fancy here. We're going to drag in status <laughs> point. This is not how you're using this. Again, everything's this linkable. Is, and then I'm going to use cool stage one. The alarm value. Uh, they're going at the same time, so that doesn't work very good. I don't know about the 3D or anything like that, but that, yeah, that's so it's taking some time to do all that. Mm -hmm. That's great. Jesus. So with this little status button, and then we can give call out text, so I'm going to call this. Turning on and off. When I hover, it turns AHU on. Oh. And when I click on it, it'll take me to AHU on. Oh, cool. So, same thing if I wanted to put this on a different layer, like let's just say we had a lighting layer, I would put this on the HVAC layer so that when you click the lighting, all the HVAC equipment would disappear and you'd be looking at just lighting information. Can you make the AQ1 stay there all the time? Is that up this hour work? Uh, this is one of the widgets that uh, can't be created. Mm -hmm. Is that other thing where you 
change the fan speed, can you make it alternate between red and green when it's having an alarm and it's running? <laughs> it shows green when it's running. Well, you can tie whatever physical point you <laughs> want to. I don't care. The second one on top of it, it'll just blink. It, it goes on a Boolean point, and all our alarms are enums. So yeah. it goes to the controller alarm, active alarm, on, on, a, on the one I was looking at at Kateco. So I yeah. just had to leave it because it wasn't actually looking at area number one. I never had a one point or whatever device yeah. point. It was looking at the whole controller. Do this doesn't right? back up when you back up Niagara. So if you want to back up your graphic system, well, over right there, export. Select all your stuff and hit export, and that's your graphics backup. So you would actually suggest doing that before you start playing with anything on site? Yes. The, it doesn't name them. Like, it just says Express Vision Project or whatever, right? So it depends. Like, if I export mine, it's going to call it. Mine says User 9 export. Yeah, it's going to say User 15 or User 9. Okay. So keep in mind, when we say Express Vision, it comes out of Express Vision template. Whether it's named Express Envision Template or Woodman or Hyperion or whatever it's named, it's the same friggin' file. It doesn't make, the name doesn't make any difference. No, I, it I mean, matter. like, so you export and then later on at the end of the day you export again, it's got the exact same file name. Yeah. You're, you're, well, it you're doesn't put a time code on it. You'll have to put the time code on it yourself. You guys are saying the backups don't back up the, back, the, the files, but if you do a station copy, it will, no. and you copy everything, it will. So after. So, no, you have I just, to do this. This will not come out of the station copy. No, this only comes out if you hit export files. That is, it, it's not in the cloud, right? right? But when you make a station copy, it does not come out. I promise you, it doesn't come out. Uh, you have to export. You have to export this separately. It's in a different spot in the file structure. Uh, this the the only way you can back up the Envision projects. So you can. Uh, I have to go. I was trying to pull this back up, but if you go back to this. If you're doing an export of what we just did right there, so you go in there, hit the gear, and hit export, you're pulling out everything that works inside of that Express Envision. If you want to back up the full Express Envision, which would include all of the other files, you'd need to be here in Designer, and it'd be Project, um, Export Current Project. So if you lose the graphics? Would we ever have to need to do this? If you lose a JS, you lose all the graphics? If you don't have it backed up, yes, you have to have it backed up. So if I, I don't I pulled it up in the wrong one, but if I hit export on that, this is going to be about a 40 meg backup because it's pulling out the full Envision file, all the all the image files, all the graphics, it's pulling everything out in that full backup. If I go into Express Envision and just pull out that Express Envision, it's going to be like 2 meg. It's, it's just the, the, the DG5 files. It doesn't have all the reference files. So for us, like if we have to change the station, we just need the little two man. Hey, is that that flickering? Yep. You just need to worry about something like that. that. Turn myself with this. You, you don't need to worry about this no. side of it. That, so this is the whole screen. This is deeper than you need to get for a backup. Okay. Even if the whole thing crashed, if we had that, we just like we just imported that one template back in. If you import, like if I export, and I'll hold it. I'll just show you. Why can't you do that? Why is the most? Important? Oh, RDG. I think I had to do that. So if I come in here and export, I export everything except the core. All right, so that pulls this out. Where does it take it to? It's just downloading it into my your download oh, downloads file. Then you'll have to copy it back in. Right. Right. So if I come back in here and let's just say I'm going to import, I go to a job, Jace crashes, I reload the Envision and everything. It's going to come up with just a blank, just like what you guys logged into. It's going to come in blank. There's no equipment, no nothing in it. I'm going to take whatever that last export is. Right. Drop it in there, and it's going to ask if I want because we have now added styles, we've added navigation, we've added layers, we did all this work inside here. So now if I import, it'll bring all that stuff back in, and you'll have exactly the same project that you had when it was backed up. And then you leave, and then you go back into it and reload. Yep. And when I reload, all of your navigation trees and everything will be there. And we've, we've tested this repeatedly. 